I believe that Blue Ridge Storm is good again in modern, and this video will prove it. Caleb Schur is one of the best Storm players in history, being the leader for builds throughout its lifetime in the modern format through the SCG Tour. I thought there would be nothing better than to copy his list that he's been streaming on his Twitch channel lately, as it is very well tuned. With this list, we have access to cards that you wouldn't normally think are good in Storm. Fire Ice is a very flexible cantrip or removal spell. Being able to kill both Ragavan or cheap creatures and disrupt the opponent's mana for cheap is what this deck has always needed. As well as, Strike It Rich is very good because it makes a treasure for one mana. This is great on the early turns to ramp you, or on the later turns to turn a red mana into a treasure. The rest of the deck is just stock Blue Red Storm from the past, but in this video you'll see why Caleb's deck building brilliance has revived the archetype. To start off the first round, we have a one land opening hand on the play with no cantrips, so we've got to go to six. Going to six, we have a very decent hand. I'm just going to bomb the Goblin Electromancer and use the Serum Visions to set up for the combo. I also want to say this is my first time playing the deck in three years, so as I resolve this Serum Visions, please just let me know in the comment section down below if I make any mistakes. Finding a Manamorphose with the draw and a Gifts and a land with the Scry, I decide that I want them both. However, with Thoughtsies being less common in the format compared to Ragavan, I want to make sure that I draw the Gifts Ungiven next turn, so that if my opponent plays a turn on Ragavan, they won't exile the Gifts Ungiven off the top of my deck. And would you know, the opponent plays a Bloodstained Mire and a Ragavan, so now we're just going to play our Baral and hope that they don't have some sort of Lightning Bolt or Fatal Push to get rid of that and bash in. To my luck, the opponent just plays their Island and passes back. I highly doubt that they're on Murktide with a Bloodstained Mire in the deck, Maybe it's possible, but with that Scalding Tarn off the top, and then representing Counterspell, there's no other play we can make than try and hold up Gifts and Given on their end step, but I quickly changed my mind when the opponent casts a Consider, so now we can just cast the Gifts and Given in response, and they have to have a Spell Pierce instead of a Counterspell to get us. Fortunately, they don't have interaction and it resolves. Gifts and Given will win us the most games. It allows us to search our library for four cards with different names, and the opponent puts two in our hand. As we already have Past and Flames in our hand, and we know the opponent has Counterspell, I decide that I'm going to get a Remand, Grape Shot, a bit of mana, and another Gifts Ungiven. Now the opponent must choose two of these cards, they'll go in my hand, and the rest will go into the graveyard, and the opponent decides to give me the Remand and the Gifts Ungiven. From here, the opponent untaps, uses a Thought Seize, and takes away Mana Morphos from my hand. This is actually surprising to me, and it makes me think that they have Spell Pierce in this spot because they're not afraid of the Remand. Anyways, with a Desperate Ritual off the top, it's now a guaranteed kill, because don't forget all of the spells in my hand are reduced by one with the Brawl, so we can just cast two Rituals, and then cast Past in Flames and flashback everything from the Graveyard. Obviously, the opponent has Counterspell in response, but with the Remand, there's nothing better we can do but counter that, and win the game. Because we can flashback everything plus Gifts Ungiven, the opponent just concedes because they are just dead. Going into boarding, I tanked for a long time, but I removed a load of bears, the romance, because all their spells are going to be one mana, and a strike it rich, because I wanted the blood moon, empty the warrens, fluster storms, and one lightning bolt, just in case we need to find it with gifts and give it. Fortunately, we have a great opening seven, and that's really nice, because I'm sure the opponent will be heavily leaning on Thoughtseize against us in this game too. Fortunately, there's no Ragavan on the other side of the board turn one, so we're going to start off with the Seer Visions. We do find a Desperate Ritual off the top, and a Consider in a land. I'm just going to keep the Consider because we are going to be operating on the opponent's end step for a while, but I don't need that land. Now we're going to fast forward because no one does anything until turn 8. The only thing I'm doing is hitting my land drops, my opponent plays a Ragavan, and we fire the Ragavan to get it off the board. The opponent continues to just cast things like Expressive Iteration and not put threats on the board, but they burnt themselves down so low with their lands that they were put to 8. This puts them in this weird spot when we go to their turn 8, they use an expressive iteration and play an island, and then tap low by playing a consider, and then a ragavan. So now with this fire ice, we can actually ice their watery grave on their end step, and then try to combo on our turn. Now things get interesting when I draw gifts and given, so I instantly start to do a load of maths, because let's say the opponent has spell pierce, can I play around that on my turn, because I do have this fluster storm in hand. And I did the math and I calculated for about two minutes and I worked out that I actually do not need to cast the Gifts Ungiven on the end step. I can actually cast it in my turn with the Baral and play around Spell Pierce and still be able to cast Past in Flames. So after another minute of tanking, I work out that I do not need to cast it after a load of maths. I'm very rusty. I'm sorry Storm Pros if you knew that I didn't need to cast it straight away. 
but it doesn't matter because like an absolute beast, I rip Pyretic Ritual off the top to make my life even more simple. As I'm comboing here though, I just want to say that Fire Ice definitely helped me win this match. Not only in game one was it very useful, but in game two, being able to kill two Ragavans and tap a land was exactly the flexibility I needed from this card and it shined in this matchup. Going into the next round, on the draw, we actually have some potentials for a turn 2 kill with this hand. Generally, hands with a load of mana has the potential and now with Strike It Rich on turn 1, you can set up for a lot more turn 2 kills than you could in the past. With the opponent starting off with an Urza's Mine and a Chromatic Star, I have to steer Envisions even though we found a land off the top because we need a Gifts Ungiven in order to win this game. I bottom both of the Scries and the opponent follows up with an Ancient Stirrings and plays another Tron land. With the opponent not having guaranteed turn 3 Tron next turn because they haven't revealed the third land, I decide that I'm going to start off with a Mana Morphos to get a bit more information on what I'm working with, but we only find a Romand so I gotta play the Baral and pass back. Here hoping the opponent doesn't have Tron, they actually don't, they just sack the Expedition map and play another Tron land. Wow, somehow they did not have turn 3 Tron. Now the only problem is, we don't find a land off the top. So here I decide to play a Strike at Rich, attack in for one, and hold up my one mana remand to try and find a Gifts and Given. The opponent then follows up with an eight mana Cityscape Leveler, which isn't too much of a problem because we can remand it and put it back to their hand, but it does turn my Baral into a Power Stone. Now while Remand does return it to their hand, it actually counters it and returns it to their hand, so the Baral does trigger as we counter the spell and we get to loot, so I discard a Goblin Electromancer. From here, my Baral turns into a Power Stone, the opponent just casts a 1 mana artifact, and we almost have a locked win just with this hand. To make things even easier, we find a land off the top, so now that we can play our Goblin Electromancer, play our Rituals, and then cast our Gifts. This is a locked win because we can get our Rituals, Mana Morphos, and Past and Flames, and wherever the Past and Flames goes, to our hand or the graveyard, we will have enough mana to flash it back. The opponent just gives us Mana Morphos and Past and Flames, but it doesn't matter because we still have enough to both cast the Past and Flames and flash back our whole graveyard to then use Gifts and Given to find Grape Shot to win the game. As it's Tron, in boarding we want the Blood Moons, the Abraid, and the Ignite Memories, and I just trim on the Striker Rich and the Fire Ices. To start off game 2, it's really fortunate for us because we keep a very nice 7 and the opponent mulligans down to 4. So this is classic Tron, but don't forget they can still have a nutted draw because of the London mulligan, they could just have the nuts turn 3 here. Things are looking good for us though when we find a Gifts Ungiven off the top, so now we can Serum Visions to dig for some rituals and ways to make mana. With a Desperate Ritual off the top and a Remand and a Consider, I decide just to keep the Remand and bottom the Consider because we do have another in hand. Things get scary though when the opponent uses an Ancient Stirrings to find a second Tron land and play another Chromatic Star. So when we draw for turn, we can only play our land and pass back and hope that this Remand will hold. Things get worse for us though when they have their third Tron land. The opponent starts off the turn with an Ancient Stirrings and I decide to snap off the Remand. And my reasoning for this is that they're most likely going to hit a very expensive spell from this Ancient Stirrings which they physically cannot cast this turn. So I really want to draw from the Remand, and it's most likely that they won't have green mana again, so let's just hope that they don't have an expensive spell. And somehow the plan works, we find an Ottawara from the Remand and a Fire Rice from our draw step. Now this isn't great for us, because we can't actually combo this turn. So the best line is to play the Baral and hold up a 1 mana Ice, so that I can tap the tower on their upkeep and hope they have nothing else. Don't forget last turn when I Remanded the Ancient Stirrings, they couldn't do anything with 4 mana. I don't know if I've played this game like a genius or an absolute idiot and it's paid off, but the opponent just taps out for an Ancient Stirrings and finds a Karn the Great Creator. With the Goblin Electromancer off the top, this is actually lethal now because we can use Desperate Ritual and Gifts Ungiven to get a guaranteed kill because of Past and Flames being able to both be cast from my hand and flashback for cheap. After we gave the opponent the decision between two rituals, Mana Morphos and Past and Flames, they put some mana into our hand and we obviously use the mana and the Past and Flames and flash back our whole graveyard and then using Grape Shot from our hand and Remand from the graveyard, I can cast the Grape Shot twice because I can bounce it back to my own hand. Now things started to go extremely south for me in round 3, and that's not because of luck, that's not because of Magic the Gathering, my own internet was letting me down. There's big roadworks on my street right now, they're literally digging up the road to install new internet cables, so it's obviously messing with my provider's internet cables, so the game was lagging a ton. Despite this, we had a very nice turn 4 kill against Yogmoth in game 1 because of the two rituals at Metamorphos and Gifts Ungiven only costing 3 mana because of the Baral. It was a very smooth and easy kill because Past Inflames can be flashback if they don't put it in my hand. 
Game 2 was very laggy, but I actually messed up a Gifts Ungiven to lose this game because I decided to take a load of flashback cards assuming they had endurance in hand, but then what they did with the Gifts Ungiven is just put the flashback cards in my hand with the idea to blow me out with endurance anyways. It was just an experience mistake and I lost to endurance game 2. In game 3, I lost again. I had to Gifts Ungiven main phase because I was using Mana Morphos to see what was on top of the deck. And then I had to cast Gifts Ungiven in my turn, and that got me a Grape Shot and a Baral to set up for the kill next turn, but then the opponent just killed me with their Yogmoth. I definitely think that last round was a loss because of experience, and I just used my Gifts Ungivens incorrectly. Despite this, going into the next round, we have a great opening hand on the play. It turns out that the opponent is actually on Indomitable Creativity because they have a Ley Lines Binding for my turn 2 Baral. What's nice though is that I have the Ottawara in hand to actually bounce the Leyline Binding, so when the opponent taps down low, I can get back my Brawl and attempt to combo kill them. But this looks to be difficult when they have a Renin 6 so that they can hit their land drop every single turn, and with Leyline Binding now only costing 1 mana because they're going to get a Triumph, this Ottawara play is definitely going to get awkward. Things first get interesting though when the opponent actually taps out to Indomitable Creativity the Dwarf Token. Now I have two choices here. I can either Ottawara the Dwarf to counter the Indomitable Creativity, or I can just let the trigger resolve, discard the Grape Shot, bounce the Leyline's Binding, and hope that in either my draw step, or the Manamorphose draw, or the third Manamorphose draw from the Past in Flames, that I find a way to win the game, it could be reasonable. And this is when I decide, screw it, I'm gonna go for the combo kill, rather than bounce the Dwarf token. We get back the Brawl and find a Remand in our draw step. So I start off by using our Rituals and Manamorphos to see what's on top of the deck. But like an absolute beast, we find Gifts Ungiven off the top to get a guaranteed win. It's nice to be lucky. Now while it looks smooth for you, the game was running so slowly for me. I'm speeding it up so you can't see the amount of lag I was working with, but by courtesy the opponent conceded so we can sideboard. Going into boarding, I want Blood Moons, Flusterstorms, and the Echoing Truth, and we take out all the slow, clunky cards that don't work against their deck. Now, I would show you the second game, but the opponent mulligans down to four, and then we win because of Blood Moon. So it was a very boring game. We beat them because of Blood Moon and eventually got to combo, as well as not hitting our land drops for a ton of turns made it quite boring. Also, on screen now is how slow my game was running. Look, I click the grape shot, it barely loads. I click again, it barely loads. Like, every button that I clicked was just lagging so badly, but the opponent concedes the match and I don't have to worry about my internet anymore. Overall, I really like this deck in the modern format right now, and I think it's definitely very competitive. If you did enjoy this video, don't forget to like and subscribe, and check out this video because YouTube thinks you'll like it.